what is going on guys? It's your boy Cecil here bringing a video here today. Bring guys a Photoshop tour to create your very own cool one minute banner design and then we're just gonna minus out the title for now because the title's gonna be in the video. I don't gotta know it now, right? Um, so yeah, as you can see my example right here, it comes off one of my examples and one of my designs I made for Kenny. Uh, as you can see it right here, very, very dope kind of style, very fun use of gradients and sort of like this really cool grungy material. Um, and then of course the entire style and the aesthetic itself, of course the one minute banner designs, you can change them up with just ease by changing the font right here. I use the, the Hunter Thieves logo of the word thieves. I use a different uh, gradient, uh, not gradient, but grunge background in the back. Uh, I use actual pictures, a frontal picture, and put the typography on the right. Um, as you can see over here, I kind of did the same exact sort of concept or structure, more or less taking away the picture just for the sake of whatever. Um, you guys can, of course, put a picture. But anyway, just change the color scheme a little bit, changing the background to a different gradient or grunge texture. Um, and of course, having a different picture, you can have multiple pictures inside of like each letter. Maybe if you guys want to do that, it'd be pretty fun and cool. Um, but the point is for this for me is creating a concept in which you guys can figure out this really fun little backing that kind of just acts as like this really cool sort of like like putting a picture on the wall kind of thing just having it be there for a compliment rather than being such a like an eyesore or maybe like too much of a focus so it's a pretty cool concept hope you guys enjoy it here today of course so likes on the video because it's secret down below as always and for whatever reason i don't say it enough but i was saying it in live stream last uh yes uh, not yesterday but two days ago but yo if you guys haven't hit the bell icon and get some notifications of when i go live or um new videos videos or posts on like community i guess i don't know uh hope you guys hit that bell button I, that's my first time actually saying it hopefully it wasn't terrible um all right let's get this thing going all right, guys, so the style of this video is actually super, super simple and super quick. And uh, I hope you guys understand the One Minute Banner Design series is one of my favorite series because it, it takes, of course, quick concepts and then kind of makes them look as cool as possible in like a really short amount of time. I hope you guys combine these cool little styles and stuff like that and make something really, really cool, right? Just so you guys know, I just want to implement, right, that it's you're looking at one tutorial, but imagine if you put like four four together and like just just make a lot right that'd be pretty kind of, pretty pretty kind of dope all right pretty kind of dope all right let's continue anyway so two things you're gonna need of course in this video or i guess three things is a black texture which i have right here <laughs> which is what we're going to start off with right and then you guys need of course a picture or multiple pictures that you guys can put behind your text right or uh, overlap on your text like the mask right and then last but not least you might need a brush stroke or if you want to do something erasing in a different cool way like a paint brush or whatever whatever fits your guys style understand that you're just going to need those three three uh, quick little different things and the brush stroke for the uh in case you guys didn't know is just so you can just do a really cool cut like this in the background for the white just so you guys know okay so to get this thing going i'm gonna go ahead and take my black texture and i'm just gonna go ahead and type in my word here which is gonna be minute <laughs> excuse me and i'm gonna go ahead put this on zero and the font that i use for my example that you guys just saw is this font right here it's super super small but it is called and it's not free by the way we're just going to tell you what it is anyway um it's called jack bot short italic there might be a free version out there who the heck knows but i know i didn't have it wasn't free for me anyway so i'm gonna go ahead and uh just so you guys really uh really quickly in my example that you guys saw my uh, actual text layer was not just like this random text layer placed in the background in this full uh full sort of like squared out version where you can kind of see the entire letters right as you can see it doesn't really touch the top here it doesn't really touch the top here but it touches the edge here it touches the edge here kind of thing i would kind of suggest you guys do more something like this where it kind of like goes over the canvas a little bit and if your font itself is not very vertically tall i personally thought it was not as tall as i would like it to be and the sense of the background and the word that's behind it itself whether it's a logo or whatever whatever it happens to be it's more so supposed to be just really cool complement to the background itself so if you guys press Control t on the keyboard press r and hold alt and shift take this middle point when you have your free transform open right you just click it and move up on the canvas it will stretch it in a in a kind of weird way it might look weird for your font maybe the font choice has to be different or you guys have to find a loophole and kind of figure out what else you can do besides having it stretch and to kind of fill the entire thing but for brush fonts for me personally i think it looks pretty cool and i'm gonna press enter and now i feel like more or less the background itself uh, or the 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 text and the layer itself is now sort of like one whole piece with the background not just like hey you see the word minute right that's how i kind of thought about it how i was doing it originally i just wanted it to feel more like it's implemented in the background rather than a focal point you guys understand so now that i have my picture here or my uh my text here i can take my picture now i also wanted to make a suggestion uh, when you guys make your pictures, of course, or you pick your pictures out, make sure you guys clipping mask them onto the actual text layer itself. So you put the picture above the text layer, then you right click, clip mask it just like so, and the picture will only show on the text itself. 
Now, what I was going to say was, if you guys had multiple different pictures, what you would end up doing is you can take a layer mask, right? And if you guys know what a layer mask does on your picture layer, you, you see how I just added a layer mask on my picture layer, which is this right here, right? If I take a brush, a black brush actually erases on top of this white layer mask. So if I take a black brush, you can see my foreground color is black. Right? If I erase it, then you can put another picture and then you just erase the left hand side to put multiple pictures. Maybe you want to put multiple pictures inside each letter. You guys know what I mean? So, um, if any point in time you want to put them back, if you change the color back to white, right, as your actual foreground color, you just go ahead and hover over it again and you're good to go. Very, very simple, just so you guys kind of know for future reference. And uh, okay, so now that you have your picture on top of your text, you can go ahead and go to your adjustments layer, go to the gradient map. And of course, right click and clip master gradient map onto um, your text as well. So you're going to have the text. Ah, I just bit my tongue. Oh, that was weird. Um, <laughs> okay. That hurt. Ouch. Um, you can have, <laughs> you're going to have your gradient layer and your text layer all put together. The word text is that's a dangerous word, bro. Just saying, um, be careful out there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and open this gradient map up and I'm going to give you guys the gradient that I'm going to be using in today's video, which basically makes the entire video in my opinion as well. So. This is it right here. Now, if your picture might not look too great, you wanna kinda make sure you have a lot of highlights, a lot of shadows kinda evenly displaced in your picture. So for me, my picture is actually pretty good. However, I didn't move it too far down. It's all this really dark shadow. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this up a little bit so you can see more of the highlights and we'll get more color. It's like, it's like literally magic. It looks pretty, what the heck is that? Is that the, oh, I didn't fill it back in. I was like, hello? All right, there you go, cool. So. Now our picture looks really good. Okay, cool. <laughs> I can move on and show you guys the gradient now, actually. So the gradient that I have for you guys here today is gonna be on the far left side is a solid white, okay? You got that? And on the far right side is a solid black. So you can start off with that. You can start off with a very basic white to black gradient. And then what you guys are gonna have to do is, let's just pretend this one wasn't here for a second. I'm gonna just delete it. Right, you just want to make, you just want to simply hover your keyboard, not your keyboard, your mouse, right under this bar here, right around this section right here. You click on it once, and then to change the color, you just double click on it and press Control V to paste. I'm just gonna paste my um, previous color that I had in there, so you guys have the same color, which is hex code 000C14. If you guys type that in, you guys will get this really nice darker um, blue tone, which kind of helps out with the, of course, having a blue primary color as the actual um, gradient. So you can see it right here. It's a nice blue prim uh, primary color. If at any point, by the way, you guys want to change your colors around, you're gonna have to change both this color here and of course this next one here. Once again, if you guys don't have this one here, you're not going to, but make sure you guys click and click around this area right here, which is basically like 75% of the way of the full 100% bar right here, right? Um, to kind of understand what I meant, right? This is just literally one over here, one over here. You're gonna have to click once here and click once around here, just so you guys know. Okay, and you, this double click color is a hex code 30C4D1. If you guys type all those codes in the same exact way, you guys will get the same exact colors. You press OK, and you're gonna have this blue here. Now, at any point, you guys wanna change the color, like I said before, what I was gonna say was, you're gonna have to change that uh, darker blue color as well as your actual, uh, your more highlighted, obviously vibrant color, which is this blue here. So, what I personally like to do is I like to keep my actual, um, when you guys put this hex code in, I would keep the actual circle where it is, but just change the hue bar here. So I said, hey, I wanted to have like a like a cool pink. I would say the pink looks super, super good. You might say to yourself that this looks really muddy in a way, like the secondary color doesn't look as good as it could be. All you have to do is just double click on this one here and move this around so you find a nice little color. That looked pretty cool. Like that looked actually super dope. That looks pretty cool, but it might not, might, bleh, might not be your thing. Um, yeah, I'll say, okay, I like this. The purple looks cool. Press okay, you press okay again, and you guys are done with your color. But for me, I'm gonna keep my blue, but uh, just so you guys know, you can make some really other cool, really, really dope colors, but the format of the actual gradient needs to stay the same as you guys just saw me do it just now for you guys. So, okay, now that that is done, you're pretty much done with the actual text layer itself and kind of moving around stuff. Um, at any point you guys wanna change things up, please change things up, add some pictures in there. But to finalize this thing, I'm gonna go ahead and control J on my actual background layer here, which is the uh, cool little gradient, uh, uh, grunge, right? I'm gonna press Control J on my keyboard, or if you just take the layer, drag into the new layer, it'll make a new one for you guys. <laughs> Excuse me. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do, since my background is actually black, now if you guys had a black background as well, 
then so be it. You can just do Control I on your keyboard. However, it's a way to kind of switch this thing up. I don't know if I said this already before, but to switch this on total like concept up, if you guys change your text font, um, like this text right here, this font uh, right here, if you guys change it up, maybe if you had like more of a, a more of a tech kind of like vibe, or like a primal um, text layer or a text, you know, whatever. Like this this font right here is right here. Is primal right it looks kind of techy kind of cool kind of abstract as well as uh, at the same time um if you guys change this kind of font to a different oh my god why is it so hard to get out if you guys change this font right to a different font yeah, whether it's a brush font it can be a cartoon font it could be a technical font it can be this really weird broken up font have fun with it and let that carry the actual concept of your banner style throughout Right? If you guys choose a different font than me just now, then there should be no reason why yours should look anything like mine besides the actual bare bone sort of base, right? So keep this in mind. Um, when you guys change the font, you might want to change the background as well to kind of go with the actual style. This is kind of help you just jog some memory and uh, understand what I'm trying to go for. Just kind of help you guys out when you guys want to try yourselves and to get a different look as well. So on this new white um, texture, I'm just going to drag it below here and I'm going to go ahead and take my little sort of uh, right here, this little brush right here. Right, and I was gonna make sure I spread it out all the way to the end of the canvases. So this on the left hand side and the right hand side goes all the way through, as you can see. Right. Then what I can do is say to myself, <clears throat> right, something like pretty good here. Right. I'm gonna go ahead and hide it for a second. I'm gonna say to myself, Control. Before I do that, actually, on this white background, I want to also drag on and put on a layer mask. Excuse me. So I'm gonna click on the layer mask. So that way, you guys know before, black erases, white fills in. But you can also quick fill with Control Backspace and Alt Backspace. So keep that in mind as well. Those just kind of go through alternate between quick filling your actual foreground color and quick filling your actual background color. So okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and Control, hold Control, click on the thumbnail of that cool little brush stroke, right? And then I can say to myself, okay, I'm going to just click on this thumbnail for the actual texture, which is the uh, layer mask that we added. I'm just going to press Alt Backspace. If that doesn't work, it's most likely because of color switch for you guys. Just press Control Backspace next, and you guys will see it erases now, right? So now that I have that, I'm going to say to myself, I like how that looks. I'll move it up if I need to. And I'm just going to add the final portion of the text, which is going to be simply just clicking in the middle with my text. But as you guys know and probably guess, if I just take my text layer, which is T on my keyboard, right, and try to click in the middle, it'll try to edit the one that's in the background. So the way I kind of get rid of that and kind of hop over that rather than just locking the layer, I like to just go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to click on my uh, text layer. I can click control. Oh, excuse me. I can hold control. And while that's selected, I can make other selections. I'll select those three layers. Otherwise, you can just click on the top one, hold shift, click on the far bottom one, and it'll select everything on between if you guys hold shift, by the way. So you can just hold either control or shift, doesn't really matter, okay? So you're gonna have these three things uh, grouped in together or selected all together. You can right click and create a smart object. So when this, now if I just put a text layer here, if I put the word banner in here now, without having any trouble without clicking the background of it, right? If you guys want to say, okay, I'm going to change this color, I'm going to go ahead and just simply double click on this little page here of the smart object layer. This is the, this is our, this is our text, right? I'm just going to double click on it. It'll open up in a new actual document size or a new, excuse me, document page. And I'm just going to go ahead of myself and say, okay, hey, like I want to change it to purple. Okay, I'm going to press okay, press okay again. And then when you guys wanted to switch over here, all you have to do is go to file, save or control S, right? You'll see over here, it'll actually be switched. And it's just really, really cool little update way and kind of way to save layer space and stuff like that, right? And also just kind of not be annoying. Um, but for me, I don't need that. So I'm just going to go ahead and finalize this by just putting on this little font that I had before, which was uh, Unisans um, Demo. This is a free font, by the way. It's in my font pack video if you guys want to check that out, if you guys haven't already. Um, banner Design. Right? Also, if you guys want to have the characters table up, it's under Windows character which is right oh i just saw it there it is right there right it brings up this character that way you guys can also take your va which is a sort of spacing between each single layer in the actual font group right or not font group but your text group and you just simply take your scroll wheel put it up kind of have your letters spread out a little bit i'm gonna say to myself hey i want about maybe like a 12 size right put that right there and then lastly put the word oops let's move back let's put this here take this word and put minute which was on the top before and i'll go ahead and kind of shrink this back to zero and just make it a little bit bigger to kind of go this nice little sort of typography have a smaller text here little subtext here play around with it and uh yeah there's the cool little banner design so i also added a little bit of a drop shadow but i mean maybe you guys got that part but the drop shadow is very very simple 
um, 100, 204, pure black, normal blend mode. Kind of just made it pop up just a little bit more. And uh, now we're done. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video here today. And hopefully, I was as clear as possible while also making a little more easier for you guys to kind of make your own style with it. Uh, I probably I showed it a little bit for some reason, just to, like kind of explain it because it's so simple. But I'm trying to tap into my. I'm not that you know experience of a designer and kind of understand what I mean when I say things. So I apologize for that if I kind of slipped up a little bit. However, hope you guys enjoyed this video here today. Two likes on the video uh, equals a secret down below, which will most likely be the PSA that you guys see here today. If you guys hit the 200 like mark, it'll put in the description down below as always. And uh, yeah, once again, I appreciate every single one of you guys. If you guys made it to the end of the video. If you guys haven't subscribed already, you guys will learn new things. I upload at least once a week, but I try to do twice a week every, every now and again. Um, much love. I'll talk to you guys later. This so HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. You guys deserve every bit of success that you guys put your efforts into. And I just hope you guys have a freaking great weekend. Or not weekend, but great week into your weekend. And uh, I'll talk to you guys on Sunday. So, with that being said, I'm done. I'll see you guys later. Peace.